What's going on guys and welcome to today's video. The stuff in front of me here today is mostly eye candy and in this video I'm basically going to be going over some of the bro signs behind output and also giving you guys an idea of what actually goes into my reviews. So jumping right into this, one of the most common questions I get asked about my reviews is why don't you include beam shots in video of yourself using the flashlights outside? I've kind of taken the answer to this as tacit for a while, but a very derogatory comment prompted me to make a response in a video like this. I'm not going to show their name because that's just not my thing, but I do think that the comment in question provides a good avenue for discussion. And the answer to this question is really exceedingly simple. It's because beam shots and outdoor video are inherently inaccurate by their nature. One way we can break this down is through the difference in the way a camera and your eye perceive light. A camera uses something called ISO, which controls the camera's sensitivity to light. ISO varies between cameras, but suffice it to say that the humanized ISO, if we could measure it, that is, would generally be much higher. So generally speaking, the higher the ISO, the more grainy or noisy an image will appear to be. In layman's terms, what this means is that your eyes are much more sensitive to light than most cameras are. You will almost always be able to see much more in real life with a flashlight than you would in a video because of the way your eye naturally adapts and your brain makes corrections to what the eye registers. Another factor that applies to this is my camera itself. I use an iPhone X to record all my videos and it simply lacks the bells and whistles that a more expensive camera might have. My iPhone automatically adjusts the exposure and other variables for low light shooting. As a result, what you see from my video would likely not coincide with another reviewer's video. I could indeed use a control, but it wouldn't be very useful unless viewers actually own the flashlight in question. So along these lines, as most of you might have guessed, I lack a lot of the fancy equipment that some reviewers have access to. Much of my reviews are based upon anecdotal experience, meaning my own experience. I guess this means you could say that my reviews are more biased towards practice than they are theory. I like specs as much as the next guy, but for me what it really boils down to is how something is going to perform in real life. Oftentimes, a lot of the specs that we see on paper are just that, on paper. While flashlight technology has definitely improved by leaps and bounds over the years, it's just a simple fact that these paper specs don't translate nearly as much as you would expect in practical use. A prime example of this that ties back to why I don't do beam shots or outdoor video has to do with the lumens race. Every year, manufacturers pump out flashlights that are consistently brighter. These minute jumps in output that are commonly measured in what we call lumens are pretty much imperceptible in real life though. And this is because your eyes perceive light logarithmically. HDS Systems does a very good job of explaining this. I'm just going to read off a little blurb here because I can't explain it as eloquently as they can. So here we go. Many people are surprised to find out that going from 0.17 to 0.25 lumens looks the same as going from 167 to 250 lumens. From your eyes perspective, the size step is the same in both cases, a small but visible change. Notice that in the first case we only increased by 0.08 lumens, while in the second case we increased by 83 lumens, a difference of three orders of magnitude. So along these same lines, it's very easy to confuse overall output for overall intensity. This is another reason why output in most modern flashlights are a moot measurement. We can break this down to lumens versus candela. If we have a circle filled with sand, you can think of lumens as all the sand in that circle. Candela, on the other hand, would be the highest point of the sand or the peak intensity of the beam if we're talking about flashlights. Bearing these measurements in mind, you can see that it would be very easy for a 140 lumen flashlight, such as my HDS executive, to keep up with or be even be perceptibly brighter than my 500 lumen Surefire Fury, which has a wider hotspot but of more overall output measured in lumens. And what this all basically comes down to is that it takes a tremendous jump in output for your eyes to see the difference. These jumps in output, which are barely perceptible though, come at the expense of efficiency and often overdriving the LED unsafely. Like so, manufacturers effectively prey on uneducated consumers who believe that more is better. And generally more is better, but not with modern flashlights. Modern flashlights are more than bright enough, trust me. So for EDC purposes, most people will never need, emphasis on need here, more than a true couple hundred lumens. True is another key word here as many manufacturers inflate their output numbers or just outright lie. Output over a few hundred lumens is mostly moot for EDC and is just burning both the battery and your flashlight's lifespan. Likewise, unless you're using your flashlight for hours at a time, run times aren't very much a concern with most EDC flashlights using rechargeable batteries nowadays. The few professions and people that might need the bar burners that hobbyists have come to love are those that use their flashlights for tactical scenarios and search and rescue purposes. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying it's wrong to chase lumens, but practically speaking, what with how far modern emitters have come, most flashlights are more than bright enough for everyday use. 
And a lot of times what it comes down to is quality over quantity. When I talk about quality, I am referring to the color rendering index, the color temperature of the LED, and the tint. All that good stuff. Um, I could delve more into that, but I'd rather move on for now. And one good final reason why beam shots in outdoor video are not as helpful as you might think has to do with age. When I say age, I'm talking about literally how old you are. As you age, your eyes change dramatically, and I think this is something that seriously gets forgotten by a lot of enthusiasts. Like all muscles, the muscles that control how much light your eyes let in deteriorate as you grow older. An older person will require much more light to see adequately than would a younger person such as myself. I believe the difference between like a 50 year old man and a 30 year old man is like, I think the 50 year old man needs like three times as much light, which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it. As a result, anything someone sees on video, which everyone sees holistically, is not going to translate accurately on an individual basis to what one would see in real life. Hopefully by now you guys can see why outdoor video and beam shots are not a very good representation of what you would actually see in real life. I will admit that I am considering adding them to future videos if only to say all the beam questions I get, but I really don't feel comfortable providing content that I know is going to lead to unrealistic expectations. And on the topic of unrealistic expectations, I always review both the pros and cons of a flashlight. I really know what it's like to pick up a light on the goodwill of a positive review only to be very disappointed. With that said, having owned and used as many flashlights as I have over the years, I'm pretty confident in my ability to pick out what's good and bad about a flashlight in practical use. So while I don't condone reviewers who are sent items to promote because they need to keep their channel alive, that just isn't my thing. I've been sent offers for products to review that I've just outright disregarded because I could tell that the products were crap. And although I make these reviews in my spare time as a hobby, I have a very high standard for my work, which I hope is obvious from the edits that I add to my reviews. As always guys, thanks for watching and I hope this explains some questions and concerns. Be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe if you haven't already as well. Peace out.